Okay, now moving on, we're going to talk about section 6.4. 6.4 is kind of a standalone little section. We're going to talk about square roots. Have you ever heard about those before? You got a leg up. And we're going to talk about Pythagorean theorem. You ever heard of that one? No. Can you say Pythagorean? Uh, Let me write on the board first. <laughs> All those hooked on phonics people, let's try this out. <laughs> say Korean. Korean. Take off the K. Orian, right? Pythag Orian. What? <laughs> That's what I got. That's it. Pythagorean. Long time ago, long time ago, there was this guy. You know, I'll tell you the story in, in, in a while. But there was this guy named Pythagoras. This was back like 500 BC, so 2,500 years ago, give or take. Okay. And um, th these guys, they were Greek. Pretty smart guys. I mean, they, they basically know all the math that we know today. They knew way, they knew more than, than, um, than this class would, would, would teach you. They, they know a lot, of, a lot of stuff. So they were able to do everything we were able to do. Uh, this guy and his followers, you see, they, they were actually a cult. Uh, these people back in the day, they worship numbers. And they, their whole foundation for their, their religion was that every number can be represented as a fraction or is rational. Well, this guy, Pythagoras, he says, he's part of their group, mind you. He's like their leader. He goes, you know, I found this one number, the square root of two, you can't represent it as a fraction. Remember talking about fractions? How every fraction should be a repeating or, or um, terminating decimal? He goes, well, this one's not. This one goes on forever and ever and ever. And they go, oh, yeah, you're right. So they killed him because it ruined their religion. So this guy was murdered by his own followers. Uh, so anyhow, this guy Pythagoras and the Pythagorean guys uh, invented this, this really unique formula that deals with a right triangle. You guys heard of a triangle before, right? Yeah. How many sides does a triangle have? Three. What's a right triangle mean? Triangle is one, of one of the angles is 90 degrees. Can you have a triangle with two 90 degree angles? No. Can you have a triangle no. with two 90 degree angles. No. That would be like this, right? That, that would be an open open rectangle. Okay, you can't have that. But if one of them is 90 degrees, you got yourself a right triangle. We're going to talk about a right triangle and the Pythagorean theorem. But before we get there, you got to know what a square root is. So we're going to talk about that first. The square root is the inverse or the opposite of squaring a number. Now, we've squared numbers in here. For instance, let's practice this. Uh, can you tell me, everybody, what is 3 squared? Nine. Uh, nine. 9. What is 4 squared? 16. What is 7 squared? Nine. Good. What's 11 squared? Nine. What's 2 squared? Four. 2 squared is 4. Good. What's 1 squared? One. Good. A square root undoes all that stuff. It's the inverse of squaring a number. So what I mean by that is if the square root is the inverse inverse means like the opposite operation of squaring a number the opposite or inverse of squaring a number, here's what it does for you. 7 squared was how much, folks? 49. Here's what the square root does. If 7 squared equals 49, uh, I did wrong. that's a square root. You ever seen a square root before? Yes. Yeah. It's on your calculators. Square root looks like this. It has a, a silly little tail. And then uh, has that, almost looks like a division symbol, but it's got the tail. If 7 squared equals 49, the square root of 49 gives you back how much you have. So. It's just the opposite of squaring a number. So 7 squared is 49, means the square root of 49 is 7. It's doing the opposite of squaring a number, the inverse. Shall we practice some? Yeah. 
don't shout these out. Let everyone think on these. Uh, I, I can't have everyone just not think because they're listening to what people talking. So the square root 25, don't shout them out. Just think about it for a second. Think about it on your own. There's an interesting one. So when we think of this, we're thinking of the opposite of squaring a number. So in other words, what number times itself gives you the inside of this radical? By the way, a, a special word for that is called a radicand. Radica can you say radicand? Radicand. Not radicant. You can. Radicand. I can do it. Get it? It sounds like radicand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so square root of 20, what's the square root of 25 then? Five. Five. Sure. How about 36? Six. How about one? One. Interesting, right? Because one squared is one. Square root of one is one. How about 100? Ten. Square root of 81? Nine. Square root of one sixteenth. Four. Not four, you're close though. One, four. four. Aha. When you take a square root, you do square root of one over square root of 16. You can separate a square root like that. It is an exponent, you'll find that in math C, that a square root is technically an exponent. So it applies to both the numerator and denominator. You get one fourth out of that thing. How many people feel okay with what we talked about so far? Good deal. Next time we'll start with uh, some simple square roots. I'll ask you, ask you some other questions and we'll continue Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to continue off of last time. But what we learned from last time is that square rooting a number is the opposite of squaring a number. So if we said like 5 squared is 25, we know the square root of 25 is 5. Let's practice some more. What's the square root of 144? 12. 12. Good. What's the square root of 16? 4. Good. What's the square root of 36? 6. How about uh, 9? 3. How about 10? 5. No. 2. 2.5. So you said square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 49 is? 7. Okay. Square root of 36 is? 6. What's the square root of 40? Show us. Are there some <laughs> numbers that you can't take the square root of easily? Right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The numbers that you can take the square root of, those are called perfect squares. So when I say, what's the square root of 49, it's easy, right? Because you go, oh yeah, it's 7. 7 times 7 is 49. But if I say the square root of 40, you go, well, what number times itself gives you 40? And there, there isn't a whole number that works. It's a decimal. Now, your calculator will do it, and we'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, but I just wanted to preview that information that a, so a lot of times, you can't actually take the square root of a number and get a whole number out of it. So let's continue talking about a couple other square roots. We knew we were able to do square roots like this one. Square root of this number is how much, everybody? Nine. Nine. Now, one thing I do want to show you. Please watch on the board. This is important. When people are first learning square roots, many people make this mistake. They go, okay, the square root of 81 is 9. But they do this. They accidentally leave a square root around it. And they keep going. Okay, they keep going. Because can you take the square root of 9? Yes. Yeah, but we don't want to do that. Once you take the square root, that square root goes away. So if I take the square root of 81, the answer is 9, not the square root of 9. It's just 9. Are you guys clear on that? Yes. All right, good deal. Have we done that example yet? Yes. Square root of 116? Yeah. Well, we can take a square root of a fraction. All you need to know is that we're taking the square root of both the numerator and denominator. So what this means is you're going to take the square root of 1 and the square root of 16. What is the square root of 1, ladies and gentlemen? 1. one. So we're not going to leave that as the square root of 1. We're going to put 1. And the square root of 16 <coughs> is how much? 4. So we get 1 4.
How about the square root of 4 25ths? You probably could do that in your head right now. 2 over 5. 2 over 5. Sure, because we're going to take the square root of 4, yes, and the square root of 25. We know that a square root is applied to both the numerator and the denominator. So yeah, we're going to get 2 fifths. 2 over 5. Do you feel okay with this so far? Yeah. I'm going to have you do a few on your own just to get your brains rolling on this. try those five examples. Just some basic square roots for you, alright? Should go pretty quick, right? Not too bad. Just kind of thinking about these numbers. So how about it? How about the square root of 100? How much did you get? Good. Somebody else, tell me the square root of 64, please. How much? Eight. Somebody else, how about the square root of zero? zero. Yeah, zero times zero is zero. So the square root of zero is zero. What now? That's true, but we are looking for the same number times itself. So technically that works. Zero times zero gives you zero. Now, how about uh, the square root of one-fourth, what would you get out of that? One Good, the square root of one is one, the square root of four is two, we get one-half for sure. How about the square root of nine-sixteenths, what would you get? How many people feel okay with these basic square roots? Good, all right. Hey, quick question, what's the square root of this number? Okay. So you're saying that negative 5 times itself gives you negative 25. Is that what you're telling me? No. no. Five. no. Five. Five. Okay, so the answer is 5 then? Yeah. So you're telling me 5 times itself gives you negative 25. Is that what you're telling me? Is this, is this equal to 5? Because no. if it were, you'd have to say 5 squared equals negative 25. Are you with me on that? That's what they say because you'd say 9 squared gives you 81, 1 fourth squared gives you 1 16th, 2 fifths squared gives you 4 25ths, 10 squared gives you 100, 8 squared gives you 64, 0 squared gives you 100, or oh, sorry, 0. Not 100, that would be crazy. So hang on, how about this one? 5 squared, does that give you negative 25? No. So it can't be that. How about negative 5? Does negative 5 squared give you negative 25? No. No, it gives you positive 25 because a negative times a negative gives you a positive. Does that make sense? Yes. What's well, the only way that would work? A negative 5 times 5. A negative times a positive is the only way you get a negative, right? Yes. But then inherently, I need you to think of this. Is that the same number? No. So what we're talking about is the same number times itself that gives you the number inside. Is that possible? No. no. Can you have the same number times itself that gives you a negative number? No. No. There's no solution to this. Not to a negative. Now, when you have a negative inside the square root, you see, here's the question. The question is asking you, what number times itself gives you 81? And what number times itself gives you 100? And those answers are 9 and 10. But then with this question, it says,